Hi guys, this is part three, I think it is, of the Airfix 30 second scale Ford Escort Mark 1. Um, and I'm going to be doing something slightly different for this one. Now, I normally do updates as I've done bits on the model. Uh, pointing out specific bits and giving you um, information regarding what I've done with said bits. Uh, however, in response to one of the viewers' questions, uh, Nuntius Legis, uh, hopefully I've pronounced that correctly, who's uh, an, um, new to the modelling scene but wanting to get a bit more information about it, he's asked if I could cover some of the actual painting, which I will do. I'll try not to make it too drawn out and lengthy for those of you that already are familiar with the whole sort of painting, airbrushing and everything side of it. And uh, But what I'm going to do first is, is quickly go over the stuff that I use. Now it's all very cheap uh, stuff, uh, with the exception of I do have a nice airbrush, which is one that I upgraded to sometime after buying the cheap set. However, this here was a £60 uh, set from eBay uh, which consists of a compressor, a model air compressor which comes with a water trap, a gauge and the adjustment lever and, uh, and a couple of holders for your airbrushes up here. It came with this hose and then additional to that is this cheap but very very essential water trap which fits underneath your gun. Um, because the amount of condensation that builds up in your airline is very surprising indeed. In addition to that we have a, a, a mask with replaceable filters which I use for when spraying enamel paints. Uh, I also use it when spraying in acrylic paints for that matter, uh, although acrylic paints obviously are less of a, a health risk. Um, so this is the compressor in use, as you can hear it's very quiet. We've got the water trap on the compressor itself and then as I say you've got this one under here and when you're spraying in humid conditions or cold conditions when it's uh, and it generates a lot of heat I say you'd be surprised at the amount of condensation that accumulates in there so uh, so that's the compressor side of it so I'm going to go over to the bench and show you the airbrushes that came with the kit on the bench are the two airbrushes that came with the kit. This one in this very chunky box which is a siphon fed. Now the siphon feed ones you, you'll have problems, you'll, you'll struggle a bit uh, getting these to draw paint up um, unless it's very thin using the hobby compressors to be honest. This one's had little use but it does work very well when all said and done. And uh, you've got a flushing cup here which you can put thinners and such in, hook it onto there to flush through, or you can put paint in it as well and actually use that as a, as a spray cup, which I have done, and then it comes with a jar which feeds into there uh, that you can fill with paint, so it's handy if you're doing a large area for example, um, although as I say I have personally found that I didn't use this one very much, but I do keep it as a just in case thing. This is the one that I used primarily and this is a gravity fed, uh, essentially it's an Iwata clone and it comes with a little spanner for the nozzle. This is the original uh, fitment it comes with for the push on hose and, uh, and then the screw fitment for the hose that comes with the compressor kit and it's a basic gravity fed double action airbrush and it's a very cheap one but it's also very good and that's what I'm going to be using to do the top coat on uh, on this model kit primarily to show um, to show this YouTube viewer that you don't need expensive equipment to paint a model and get a nice finish with it we're here at what is my temporary airbrush station uh, so I normally stand up and at the other side of the room spraying but frankly because uh, I've got directional light there which is not really good for showing up on video so um, so what I've got here is uh, this airbrush is empty just at the moment what I've got here is this set up uh, just giving this a bit of a blow over just to make sure there's no loose dust particles and such and I've got paint mixed up here in a little medicine pot which I use for mixing my paint 
um, mixed up with appropriate thinner to the approximate um, consistency of milk which you will hear a lot um, when you're reading about mixing paint and if you kind of aim for that consistency don't worry too much about quantities so um, what I'm going to do because I'm going to be putting the mask on in a moment um, I'll be quite muffled if I have to speak so essentially what I'm going to do a quick blow over of all the surfaces to make sure that there's no errant bits of dust or what have you on the model check the general area there's no bits of detritus that are going to stick to the wet paint and, uh, and then I'm going to give the paint a good stir, decant it into the airbrush a bit of rag handy to do a test spray just to check the spray pattern I've got the compressor set to somewhere between 15 and, and 18 psi roughly I normally spray enamels at a slightly higher PSI, uh, however I've been finding with this, I think it's weather related at the moment, that they're actually laying down better in a lower PSI. So this is all experimentation, something you'll get used to. So I'm going to pop the mask on now and, uh, and we'll start laying some paint down on the model. Right. So it shows, as you can see, hopefully, that paint's spraying nicely and laying down nicely. So I'm going to start off with a mist coat over the whole body tub. So I'm going to put that out of so it doesn't get blown off of the airflow. The important thing at this stage is do not lay it on too heavy or too thick and fast. You can do another coat or two afterwards to get that. It's tempting once the paint's flowing to lay it on your own. So take the time, fill up the layers properly. And that will reward you with a much nicer color paint. There we go. There we've got, uh, not particularly shiny as you can see, but there we've got the first mist coat of colour down. I'd say this one doesn't need to be heavy. You're, you're laying down the basics to lay the wet coats on the feet. So we'll leave that to flash off a moment while I focus on the bonnet. Now we're going to start laying down the first of the wet coats. Follow the same pattern as you did before, start from where you started from before. And what you're doing this time is a combination of a slower pass with, with a trigger pull further back so you're applying a heavier coat of paint. And what you're looking for, this will take practice, the best thing to do if you're new to this is practice on any old things like plastic spoons, ideally anything with a contour. Uh, prime them with any old primer and then practice and practice and practice with your paint consistencies, your, your paint pressures and practice laying the paint down and what you're looking for is the paint to just start to gloss but not run and it's easier to say than do and it takes practice. But it's easily achievable by anybody. Now hopefully you can see there, you've already got a, a nice gloss on that compared to the roof. And that's what you're looking for.
This is the cheap Chinese airbrush. These are 10, 15 pounds um, on eBay for the brush. Uh, 60 pounds for the set, two brushes and a compressor. And this video essentially was uh, for this viewer in particular, but just for any viewer that's interested in a cheap airbrush setup, to make you aware that you do not need the latest and greatest and all singing, all dancing to get a nice paint finish. Now, if I can just swing this light round here a little bit, so you can see that's three coats, a, a, a fine mist coat, and then uh, and then two consecutively heavier wet coats. Um, and you can see, hopefully, if I can get this thing right, well. I love the reflection we've got. This is why I like Humbrol enamel paints. The reflection and the depth of the paint is very, very nice indeed. Um, and the same with the, the bonnet, the hood. There you can see. And we're going to put that away in a covered box to cure. And for at least, to fully cure, it needs 72 hours. And, um, but it should be touch dry within 24 to 48 depending on the conditions, the temperature conditions. Uh, for cleaning out the airbrush, look at my other videos for the how to clean your model airbrush uh, for enamel and acrylic paints and that will show the procedure there. Um, but there you go, so a cheap airbrush setup and you can achieve some very nice results. Now it's not perfect, you will, it will need a little bit of polishing out. The environmental conditions are part of the problem with that at the moment because it's very very cold. Um, so, so there you go. Um, obviously, if you've got a dedicated spray booth and everything, that's that's better. As long as you've got ventilation and, and a, a face mask, then you're okay. So I hope uh, this bit was useful. That's the body repainted, and in the next video, hopefully, we will have a bit of assembly, and and maybe be looking at putting a clear coat on the body.